Is it possible to completely forget your native tongue? Let's talk about it. Hello, noble ones, and welcome to Metatron's Academy. Today's discussion is rather interesting because the idea of but is it really possible to forget your own first language? It really is connected to many different sub-branches or subtopics, if you will, in order to be able to answer this question correctly and professionally. So today's discussion is going to divide into the following sections. I think, normally speaking, whenever we approach this discussion of forgetting a first language, uh, the first thing you might think is to have a linguistic approach, but in reality, uh, probably the first case that we should talk about is the neurological one. In other words, there are indeed some specific medical conditions that could absolutely be connected to loss of primary language functions. For instance, traumatic brain injury that can lead to cognitive and communication disorders, which sometimes do manifest with loss of linguistic ability. That is because temporal lobe affects memory and language comprehension. Another example would be aphasia, which can present itself not only as a result of a stroke, but also brain tumour, dementia, and may often result in some form of language impediment, according to at least speech-language pathologists. Another thing that we should consider is also the psychological aspect of it. So not necessarily something that is medically connected to brain damage, but something that is traumatic in nature. For instance, if your first language is connected to painful memories and trauma that you might have experienced as a child or in general early, in general early on, it has been proven that the mind might create a barrier and instead connect to your secondary language, if you have one, as your main or preferred form of communication system. Of course, in this case, the problem is linguistic, but from a psychological point of view, rather than connecting to the actual mechanics of language function. In other words, it's not that you can't use it anymore, it's that you don't want to, at least at an inner level. Well, let's say that you are a speaker of, I don't know, Polish, but you moved outside from your country when you were, I want to say, 13. You moved to the UK and then you just used English for the rest of your life. Would you forget your first language? Well, generally speaking, the answer is no, at least if said move happened after the ninth year. But sometimes, depending on the person, even children that are, I want to say, up to 12 year old, their first language might still be in danger. In the vast majority of cases, unless the child is very, very young, the first language won't be completely forgotten. But the person who moves out might have some problems with, for example, neologism. And I have an experience on this one, it's not direct, it's secondary, but I remember this friend of mine who was basically the concierge, the custodian in the uh, building where I used to live back in Sicily. So, native speaker, he speaks Italian, but he was born in the US from Sicilian parents, so he actually learned Italian at home, but his Italian was actually two generations too old, if you will, compared to mine. So sometimes he would use expressions that to me sounded Goodness gracious, like my grandfather would speak. And on the flip side, when he first moved back to Sicily as an adult from America, he wasn't familiar with some of the neologisms that the youth now use in Sicily that, of course, his parents wouldn't have known because they didn't exist at the time. When it comes to moving to another country, something that can also happen is not just not being familiar with neologism, but also to forget words. In the majority of cases, you will never forget your entire language, but you may experience something that is called struggling to find the right word. And this is something that I myself have experienced. I do speak Italian just as well as I did when I moved to the UK, and then of course, then I moved to Japan, then I moved to the US. I never forgot Italian, but sometimes it does happen, and please let me know in the comments if this ever happens to you, that I know the word in English, but if someone asks me how do you say that in Italian, it might take me a moment. And very rarely can take me an afternoon, but in general, like the other day I remember I could not remember the word, for I think it was electric fan or something like that, uh, eventually came to me, but in that very second, I knew it in my second language, I couldn't remember it in my first. Something that did happen to me when I was in the UK has to do also with the kind of life that you live in your new country. So for example, in Italy, I was always a city boy. So even though I knew, of course, all the words that a normal native would know, even when it comes to nature, when I moved to the UK, I was spending a lot more time in said nature. And so a lot of words that I were used to describe like all different varieties of berries, I know exactly what a mulberry is, I know exactly what cranberries, blueberries, gooseberries, blackberries, raspberries, I knew all of that in English, 
but when someone asked me, so how do you say all of that in Italian? Well, I knew raspberry, that's lampone, a blueberry is mirtillo, what about mulberry? I'm like, I don't got a clue. And that's so funny, oh, now I do, it's gelso, but it's so funny because I knew what it looked like, I knew the word in English, I had no idea how to say that in Italian, until I looked it up and I'm like, oh yeah, okay, so that would be gelso. So I was familiar with the word, I couldn't connect it to the fruit because I hadn't had that fruit in Italy. Isn't that fascinating? Something else that can happen when you move to another country and you start speaking another language is the transportation of habits or habit words. For instance, when I speak English, I tend to use the word actually a lot. Not in the annoying way though. It, very normally, like when you say, well, I actually really like coffee or, you know, actually, I don't really want to go to that theater, movie theater, whatever. In Italian, <laughs> we have a word that sounds a bit like it, which is attualmente, but it doesn't mean it. It doesn't translate it. Uh, in fact, the correct translation would be in realtà, in reality. That's how we say it. No one would say, but attualmente, because attualmente in Italian means currently. So it's a false friend. Because I got into the habit of using actually in English, it's just an example, but there are several, I wanted to say something similar in Italian. And so I, it happened just a couple of times, but I would begin a sentence by saying, but attualmente, and then I had to stop myself and be like, what the heck am I saying? It's in realtà, in verità. Well, in verità is kind of our cake. Now, this of course can happen with false friends all over the linguistic map, but it's not just something that has to do with false friends. Sometimes it's a connection to what you're used to saying in that language. For example, when I speak Japanese, when I was in Japan for four years, I created some linguistic habits and then I was missing those expressions. For example, so this ne, which means it's like this, isn't it? But it's an expression, it's like, gosh, how would you say that in Italian? Eja. Yeah, it would be like an eja. If I had to translate it literally, I would say è così, non è vero, but no one says that. But I did say it in Japanese a lot, so then I was missing it in Italian. Something else that can happen also is an influence into the, your syntax and general sentence structure. So sometimes if you get used, for example in Japanese, to build sentences a certain way, uh, in Japanese the verb is always at the end, in standard Italian the verb is instead, just like in English, subject, verb, object. In Japanese is subject, object, verb. If you get used to a structure that functions differently and you get up to fluency, then if you switch into your main language, sometimes it can happen that you might maintain the same structure even though you know it's wrong and generally speaking you will correct yourself and you can tell that there is something wrong, it might happen, particularly if you are sort of on the spot. The one thing that in my experience never gets an impact from living abroad is pronunciation. If you move to another area where they speak your own language but a different accent, you might pick up a little bit of the accent, this does happen, but would I ever sound English when I speak Italian if, if I had spent 10 years in the UK instead of two like, like I did? My opinion is no. It is in fact more probable that if I, being Sicilian, were to live in London but sharing my flat with someone from Rome, that I would pick his accent but not an English accent speaking Italian. That is very improbable. Could it happen if I was extremely young? Absolutely, but if you're not and you're already an adult and I want to say even a teenager, it's very unlikely that you will lose any accent because the accent is just the way your mouth matrix works and it's something that it's directly connected to your brain. And I might make a dedicated video, I don't want to go too te technical, but my opinion is that I'm not going to say categorically never, gonna happen or never has happened because then you are gonna find the one case in which a kid did develop a foreign accent but I'm gonna say 98% of the cases not gonna happen. As we reach the conclusion of this video how can you guard from avoiding not knowing how to translate something, not getting the correct term, making sure you can switch correctly, uh, making sure you're quick enough, making sure your sentence structure is not affected, or then again, that you know exactly how to replace your linguistic habits into your first language, but in a correct way. Well, the best way to do that is indeed practice. So switching between languages is a skill. 
and it's a separate skill from translation, from interpretation, it's a different skill from your listening, from your speaking ability, uh, from your pronunciation, from your ability to read, to write, it's a different skill and it needs its set, its practice. And I practiced it a lot uh, because it was something that I wanted to be able to do. Do I still mess up occasionally? Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure I've made some mistakes here because I keep having to think in Italian and occasionally in Japanese to give you examples. And I'm sure that that uh, affects a little bit my flow and, and how natural my English is. I know that, but in general, I want to say that I am able to switch between languages without having to necessarily disrupt significantly the overall correctness of said language, both grammatically and from all other aspects. Definitely the best way to counter this is practice. So I was reading a few articles online that were talking about this and they were saying absolutely avoid, if you're in London, don't talk to Italians if you're Italian because uh, that might make your sentence structure weird. I disagree. I I think what you shouldn't do, as I often say, is to spend too much time with Italians if you're trying to learn English, but if you're already fluent, you're very fluent in English and you want to make sure you maintain your first language, absolutely hang with your friends that speak that language just as long as they, as you keep a balance. You know, it, you want to give more hours to your second language, but you, you know, if you also have the, if you can call your parents, you can call your friends, call your brother, call your sister uh, occasionally, maybe for an hour a day and get into the habit of switching, you will be and affected and in fact it will help you very much if you're trying to then work into a field of professionals that do require quick language switching. All right, noble ones, but I hope that you enjoyed this video and you found it entertaining. If you did, please remember, subscribe to the Academy and as always, thank you so much for joining Metatron's Academy.